a very good morning to all of you in the previous video we discussed about nhrc's uh, composition functioning uh, the procedure in which they handle the complaints today we'll discuss about uh, state human right commissions and other statutory commissions which are formed for various uh, special groups so to start off we will first discuss about the composition of shrc means state human right commission it consists of one chairperson who should be chief justice of high court then a ceo chief executive officer then one judge of high court one district judge in that state then two members having knowledge or experience or expertise of uh, human rights area then uh, one officer who should not be below the rank of secretary to the state government then uh, police and investigative staff so that uh, the matters or investigations can be done not below the rank of inspector general of police that is igp then about the appointment appointment is done by the committee which consists of chief minister speaker legislative assembly minister in charge of the department of home in that state and leader of opposition in legislative assembly so these are the members of uh, the committee which uh, decides about the appointment of members of shrc then about the tenure tenure is same as we discussed in the nhrc now the functions functions of shrc and other statutory commissions are more or less same as of nhrc functions include first thing is inquiry obviously in uh, nhrc was uh, nhrc also and it uh, inquiry was the first function inquiry here is uh, related to the matters which are in list 2 that is the state list and list 3 which is the concurrent list these lists we uh, must have studied in social studies in school time so in the state matters state list is referred and concurrent list is the list where center and state government both can take decisions then second function is annual or special reports that also we discussed in nhrc so shrc also prepare annual or special reports about their functioning then uh, there are various human rights courts also uh, sometimes government may specify district court to be human right court where the matters of human right violation can be taken up and finally finance accounts and audit all the um, activities uh, of shrc the finance department and audit of that finance department is also the function of shrc now the first uh, statutory commission for minority is national commission for minorities which is ncm it was set up in 1992 minorities include muslims christian sikhs buddhist parsis and jains basically all other religions other than hindus because only one religion is in majority in our country which is hindu functions of this uh, commission more or less same as i told you as of nhrc only differences here these uh, complaints will be only related to a specific group so here evaluation of progress of minority how they are doing in the country to protect their rights to make recommendation uh, about the effective implementation of rights of minorities to handle complaints related to violation of uh, rights of minorities then handling cases of discrimination if minorities are discriminated in comparison to the majority then those cases will be taken up by them then conducting research in the area of minorities only then uh, on the basis of research certain recommendations can be given to the government for uh, development and protection of the minorities then annual and special reports again the same function where they publish about their annual uh, progress then handling cases referred by central government certain cases may be given to them by the central government those cases are also dealt by them then the second commission is national commission for scheduled caste first we'll see the uh, background of this commission article 341 1 and 342 1 notified some backward communities as scheduled caste and scheduled tribe so in our constitution in these two articles uh, there has been a notification about the uh, scheduled caste and scheduled tribe that is which communities will be considered as sc and st because they are backward so certain uh, advantages must be given to them to uplift their status in the society then article 338 of the constitution provided for special office to ensure safe uh, to ensure safeguard for them 338 provide for the uh, special provisions 
about uh, protection of SC and ST. Commissioner for SC and ST was appointed for this purpose so that they can oversee that whomsoever uh, belong to this category gets all kind of protection and all kinds of rights are fulfilled. Then, but later in amendment of Article 338, which is uh, 46th Amendment, single member special office was replaced with multi member system. Earlier it was only commissioner who was responsible for this thing. Later on it was replaced with a multi member system, means various members were involved in a department. Now they uh, were taking care of scheduled cast and scheduled drive. So this was implemented in 1978. Then in 1987, it was named as National Commission for SC and ST. It was combined earlier but later on in 65th amendment in 1990 sorry it came into existence after 65th amendment in 1990 then in 89th amendment it was separated that is two commissions were framed one commission was for sc and another commission was for st then uh, functions investigation they investigate the complaints evaluation they evaluate the safeguards provided to the sc category they handle their complaints they uh, help in planning also uh, that is how government can further take steps for the socio-economic development of SC category. They report to the president, they give recommendations to the government for better upliftment of this category and other functions include protection, welfare and socio-economic development of SC category. Now is the National Commission for Scheduled Tribe as I told you that uh, later on these two groups were separated. National Commission for Scheduled Cost, Cast was different and uh, another uh, group was National Commission for Scheduled Tribe. Its functions include again the same thing, investigation, investigate the cases of violation of rights of scheduled tribe, evaluation of the safeguards provided to them, uh, handling the complaints of violation of their rights, advisory function, they advise government on various uh, measures and steps that should be taken by them for upliftment of ST category then they report to the president, then they provide recommendations and other functions include any other function specified by president or law in relation to ST. If president specify any other additional task or duty or any other law prescribes certain other duties related to ST category, they will perform those duties also. Measure for granting ownership rights of minor forest produce to ST. Uh, as uh, we all know that we discussed in uh, unit 1 also about the disadvantage, unit 2 also about the disadvantaged group that is scheduled caste and scheduled tribe, that the scheduled tribes live in forest and the uh, forest produced is their ownership right, right? So that should be given to them that uh, they should not be deprived of that, that has to be taken care of by this commission. Measure to protect rights over mineral resources and water resources present in the uh, forest because they are completely dependent on the forest for their livelihood. Measure for development of ST through implementation of feasible livelihood strategies. Certain livelihood strategies should also be uh, framed for them because many times these ST categories are forcefully moved from forest to villages. There they face major problem of livelihood. So certain strategies should, should be designed for them so that they can also earn and live a normal life in the villages. Then measure for relief and rehabilitation of tribal groups. As I said, uh, many times these are forcibly uh, displaced from one place, means forest to villages. So there they should be rehabilitated because they don't uh, have any exposure about the village life. So it is very difficult for them to adjust over there. So government should take uh, this responsibility and should help them. So this commission help them in doing so. Measures for attain, attaining cooperative and involvement of tribes, how they can be involved in the normal social life that has uh, been the duty of this commission. Then measure to eliminate the practice of shifting cultivation by tribals that lead to degradation of land and environment. Then another thing, another problem, environmental problem which is faced due to tribals is that they used to do shifting cultivation. They keep on shifting from one place to another because one uh, area, one land becomes less fertile over the time period. So what they do, they shift to a new place and because of that land degradation is happening. So in this case, uh, government has to take certain steps or these commissions are involved for uh, this thing so that the land degradation can be stopped. They can uh, tell them the methods to uh, to keep their land, the same piece of land more fertile over the time period that is the use of fertilizers or the new technology of agriculture all these kind of things can be told to them 
Then is the National Commission for Women, specially made for the females, established in 1992. Functions are reviewing constitutional legal safeguard provided to the females, whether they are effective or not. Then facilitating redressal of grievances, grievances related to women issues. Then recommendation of remedial measures, what remedies, uh, what remedial steps can be taken. Association with other organization, other NGOs who are also working in the same area. Advise government on policy matter, what new policy should be framed for the protection of females. Taking steps for improvement of status of women, so that the status of women can be improved in the society and more empowerment could be given to them. Then maintaining record of various cases which they deal, asking for documents from concerned authority to investigate into a matter, providing training to various people like police, judiciary, administration, etc. So that they can deal with females in a polite or better manner. Then organizing awareness programs about human rights, encouraging research in related area means area where uh, they study the violation of rights and uh, how further uh, they can be protected. Performing any other function as assigned by the government. Then is the National Commission for Protection of Child Rights. Similarly, there is a Commission for Protection of Children. It was established in 2007. Again, same functions. They review existing laws. They inquire about the complaints. They create awareness about child uh, rights. Then they find gaps in the policy and legal framework. Means uh, policies are good or uh, maybe legal framework is weak or it could be other way around also. So where are the gaps so that those gaps could be filled and better results can be achieved. They handle complaints related to children. They do research and document that research and publish that research so that others can also get benefit from that. Then they report to the government, the central government about their functioning, what they have done in the whole year, uh, what kind of cases they have dealt and what kind of remedies or reliefs they have provided to the children. Then examining factors inhibiting child rights, they do research about what factors are responsible for inhibition of um, child rights. Then special care of children, uh, they are uh, advised to take special care of children who are uh, not in a position that they can take good care of themselves or they are not having parents also. So in that situation, this commission takes care of those children. And finally, inspection of various areas, various offices or various places to find out the factors uh, or find out the information related to the complaint. So that was about the National Commission for Protection of Child Right. Now this is the last one, National Commission for Safai Karamchari. Again, uh, it is specifically designed for Safai Karamcharis and their rights. It was established in 1994. Its functions are they review about various laws and various rights related to Safai Karamchari. They give recommendation about um, various parameters or measures which should be taken by government for betterment of these people. Then they handle grievances related to Safai Karamcharis. They report their functioning to the central government and any other functions which is recommended to them by the government. So uh, these were the statutory commissions which are specially designed for uh, some special groups and they deal with the cases of only those groups. So that was all about our redressal mechanism present in our country which included judiciary, then NHRC, then SHRC and various other statutory commissions designed for specific groups. So that's all about uh, the redressal mechanism.